there are three channels for manifesting or revealing the glory of God. Now that you know what the glory of God is, a holistic capture of everything that makes God, God. But like I've taught you here, in Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23, there are many expressions of God's glory. But in order of priority, there are three of them. Please look up. If you ever talk about manifesting God's glory, these three dimensions must be captured in your life. If not, God cannot be fully glorified. There are many other expressions, but the foundations as far as revealing and expressing the glory of God in the world of men is concerned is captured in this one verse. Number one, wisdom. Number two, power or might. Number three, riches or wealth. No matter how humble you are, no matter how modest you are, if you love the Lord truly and you desire to see his glory manifest, it becomes your business to have an experience with God that allows these three dimensions of him to be captured in your life. It says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. There is glory in wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. There is glory in might. All kinds of might. Intellectual might, political might, relational might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. So he's not saying that the glories here are wrong. He's only saying with respect to God, your real glory should be in the fact that you know God and you understand him. But that in walking with God, these are the three pillars that are the foundations for the revelation of the glory of God. Everywhere you see the glory of God upon the earth, you find out that the channels foundationally that gives that glory expression in the world of men is wisdom, power, and wealth. And these are the three areas Satan will fight the saints to make sure they fail in these three areas. The bankruptcy of wisdom, the bankruptcy of power, whether spiritual power, intellectual power, are we together now? Relational power, he will fight power anywhere he sees it. And then riches. Wisdom. The outworkings, the intelligence of the spirit flowing through a believer. Look at me please, ladies and gentlemen. Can I tell you? The degree to which the wisdom of God flows through your life. That is the degree to which the glory of God will be captured and revealed in your life. Most believers do not know that destiny actualization and even glorifying the name of the Lord in the world of men is wisdom dependent. Please look at me. When you begin to walk with God, learning scripture, coming to church, investing in prayer, something begins to happen to your understanding. Are we together now? You begin to transit in your understanding and you get to a realm where you have a quality of wisdom called the wisdom of the just. I think that should be Luke 1 17. If I fail to get it, please look for it for me. Luke 1 17, I think. Did I get that right? Yes. It says, and he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just. There is a kind of wisdom that only those in Christ can have. You have been taught here that there are different levels of wisdom. There is what we call Sophia, scientific wisdom. Wisdom that is a product of experimentation. Are we together now? Yes. There is natural wisdom what we call common sense you don't need to be advised you don't need a word of knowledge to know you don't put your hand close to fire natural wisdom there is demonic wisdom wisdom that is inspired by your fraternity with unclean spirits any spirit that is not the spirit of god and is not the spirit of the believer is called an unclean spirit because there are only two dimensions of holy spirits the first Holy Spirit is God himself who is spirit, the Holy Spirit. And then the recreated believer in Christ is also a Holy Spirit. 
Are we together now? Every other spirit that is not God, every other spirit that is not the recreated believer spirit in Christ is an unclean or an unholy spirit. Are we together? When we talk about Holy Spirit, God and every other spirit that is derived from him, I should say, so that that includes angels and the rest. Even though angels are not believers, because they come from God and proceed from his presence, they also carry his holiness. Are we together? And according to scripture, angels can be unholy. The ones that were unholy were judged. Lucifer, alongside the many who have been bound today in everlasting chain. The Bible teaches us that Lucifer is not even the most dangerous of those spirits. There are spirits today that are bound in everlasting chain for the sake of the elect. There is a time for their judgment that is coming. This is what the Bible teaches. Are we together now? Yes. There are many other spirits who, um, I, I mean, our, our, our history on earth is mad with all kinds of humanoid species that are products of spirits that coexist with humans. It is true. From Genesis chapter 6, you find that and then continues right even up until Revelations. But just for you to know that the wisdom of God is very important. Listen, I have taught you that you see the power of wisdom in the quality of the decisions that you make. The proof of the presence of wisdom is the quality of the decisions that come out from your life. Because like you have learned here, you do not choose consequences. You only make choices and decisions. Are we learning now? Attached to every choice and attached to every decision is a consequence. You are not given the liberty to choose consequences. You can only make choices and decisions. And those choices and decisions already have consequences attached to them. The assignment of wisdom is to guide you using the lens of scripture and under the influence of the Holy Spirit so that through knowledge, through enlightenment, you can apply what you know, the correct scriptural application of knowledge for your profiting is what we call wisdom. Wisdom is not just knowledge. Wisdom is the correct scriptural application of truth because truth can destroy. When truth destroys, it is not wisdom. Is someone learning now? Many believers do not have the wisdom of God working in their life. They have human wisdom. Some even have all kinds of demonic wisdom. How do you know that the wisdom of God is at work in your life? Because wisdom is connected to mighty works. You see ordinary men, but mighty results, products of your decisions. Mighty works technologically, mighty works in business, mighty works in ministry. Everywhere you see mighty works that brings glory to the name of the Lord, it was built by wisdom. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. Through wisdom, the Bible says, a house is built. Let's have amplified. Through wisdom, the Bible says, a house, a home, anything at all, when it has to do with building a life, a home, a destiny, it is built by wisdom. Great corporations are built by wisdom. Great ministries are built by wisdom. Great organizations are built by wisdom. Please hear me believers. Every time you see mighty works that glorify God, wisdom is there. There are many believers who love Jesus, but you may never build anything mighty because the wisdom of God is not at work in your life. You don't have to be bad to lack wisdom. But if you do not have wisdom, many things will not be built in your life. You cannot fake the presence of wisdom. Your works implicate you. Did you hear what I said? You cannot fake the presence of wisdom. No. Wisdom is not one of those things you claim and say, I have. Uh-uh. There is no bragging about it. If it is not at work in your life, it will show immediately the absence of mighty works is the proof that wisdom is absent. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, there are several people today 
The reason why their lives are stunted is not just because of causes. Please listen to me. There are families today, there are great ministers, co-laborers in the gospel. Their works are small and stunted today. Not because God does not intend for them to rise. They have not accessed the wisdom of God. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you access the wisdom of God, your life becomes a wonder. The works speak. The quality of your decisions, your life will change at the instance of the arrival of wisdom. Are we learning? In Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9, Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9, the Bible says, and Joshua, I like that. Everywhere I see Joshua, I smile. He's talking about me. The one who has died, save Johnny, we'll meet when we get there. But as far as I'm alive, I become a representation of everything. If it's anything bad, I reject it. If it's anything good, I receive it. Dr. Mudok would define wisdom as the ability to discern difference. Is that true? Let's finish that scripture. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. What was he full of? The spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid hands on him. I like the fact that wisdom can be transferred. Does that mean someone is carrying it tonight? Hmm. And the children of Israel hearkened to him. You see that when people don't listen to you, it's because wisdom is not flowing from you. The human spirit, born again or otherwise, can detect the presence of wisdom. Let me tell you the truth. The human spirit doesn't have to be recreated. The moment the wisdom of God is finding expression, everybody within you can know that this is not just human ideas and philosophies. It says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that no man can gainsay nor resist. Listen, if God sends you, make sure you cry for wisdom. Don't just understand your message. It takes wisdom. Colossians 1.16. Let me show you something. Or 1 verse 9. Colossians 1 verse 9, I believe. Please give it to us. Let's hurry up. Let's read together. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, uh -huh, and to desire that ye be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What makes mighty men from weak men is not their size. Mm -mm. It's not their region. It's wisdom. Show me a man who has access wisdom from God. You become a wonder to your world. You believe me when I tell you this. Show me a man in ministry. Show me a businessman who has by whatever scriptural means access the wisdom of God whether directly from God as he imparted upon Solomon or by submitting to vessels that carry that oil or wisdom that comes from scripture when that thing lands on your life the difference becomes clear you believe me when I tell you this the deficiency of results in the body of Christ is absence of divine wisdom now we pride over intellectual wisdom and I'm, I'm not against that human wisdom common sense brain work these things are wonderful but you need to understand that you cannot birth the purposes of God to his expectation using the intelligence of men alone unbelievers know this in addition to all their education and their reading they will fraternize with spirits to say come and help me I cannot do this by myself it would be foolish for me and an insult on your intelligence to make you believe that Koinonia Global was built just by the idea of a man. No. You know how many ideas, organizational ideas, you need to sample in the strength of the flesh to build? No. There is a place for that. But let me tell you the truth. There is an impartation of the spirit of wisdom. When it rests upon you, the difference becomes clear. Some of the messages you see coming out from here, I have no hand in some of them. I may have studied to put them together, 
but some of them I go to bed some of them while I'm praying some of them while I'm doing something else it comes is the wisdom of God if you don't have the wisdom of God as a preacher if you like read your Bible from Genesis to Revelation you will preach every revelation you have you will be confused before yourself and your members they will know you are exhausted it takes wisdom there is a fountain that keeps flowing it will never end I tell you our fathers have touched up this fountain and they've been preaching for 40 years week in week out it never runs dry there are great businesses that have been built today on account of wisdom there are great organizations that have been built today giving God glory wisdom the Bible says does any man lack wisdom so men can lack wisdom and they can know they lack wisdom it takes humility to come to that state of awareness why are my results like this if you are not honest with yourself and you flatter yourself in your, I'm sure it's just one condition things are not working it's a lie takes honesty and humility and admission ministry can be better than this business can be better than this my family can be better than this my children can be better than this my school can be better than this the shop or the mall i'm building can be better than this why is everybody in my organization hating me i think it's just witchcraft it may be true but have you tested what wisdom can do in that organization there are many things i didn't know before i cried unto god and i said father grant me wisdom grant me wisdom grant me wisdom when that impartation comes it is part of the ministry of wisdom to discern people before they become it is wisdom that will help you to see someone and know that that is going to be the greatest prayer secretary the greatest um, Bible study secretary the greatest pastor that will come out from you because you cannot know in the flesh you can see somebody so stubborn but wisdom can tell you endure there is a giant rising out of here if you don't have wisdom you will drive good people from your life because you cannot see their future at that point all leaders need wisdom it is the ability to harness potential you can see somebody looking all loyal and wonderful but the Spirit of God tells you get this person out of your organization now 10 years from now you will regret is wisdom all leaders become true leaders because of the presence of wisdom are you listening now this is very important some of you have given your cheeks to all kinds of Judas there's left keys from Judas right keys from because you don't know Jesus will say come on to me you will call him a demon Judas will say come and you will come because there's no wisdom the ability to discern is not there there are many of you, everybody in your life have, has access to your Holy of Holies. It is not wisdom. The tabernacle was built carrying three layers. There is the outer court. There are things that stay at the outer court. There is the inner court. There are people and things that stay at the inner court. Only foolish people grant anybody access to the inner chambers of your life and your destiny. It doesn't work that way. I learned by wisdom and from men that carry wisdom never promote people beyond their last level of honor it is a disaster so says wise people when you promote this honor you are putting a knife at your own neck this alone can be a deliverance for someone are we in church you want to see the glory of God manifest in your life you need wisdom you need wisdom Apostle, but God gave me four boys. I'm tired of them. Let me tell you the truth. Your tiredness has not even started till you get wisdom. Because those boys are not the, you are gone are the days where a parent is the only person that mentors the children. Social media carries more influence on them than many families. You will need wisdom. Are we together? Years ago, if you don't like what your children are watching, all you need to do is to off the central television and that's the end of it everybody goes to sleep with anger but they go to sleep unfortunately as you are off in that television it becomes a, a more convenient viewership for the people they can flip all kinds of things you need wisdom there are many unending battles in the lives of people because they lack wisdom God comes to Solomon by night and says ask 
what will I give to you? And he said, I am young. I'm not able to lead these people. Would you give me an understanding heart to discern judgment? That was a way of asking for wisdom. And God was so impressed. He says, you had a chance to ask for the life of your enemies. You had a chance to ask for all of that because this is what you asked for. I have given to you what you desire. And in addition, I will give you the thing you did not pray for. Riches, wealth, and honor like no king has ever had. That man woke up not knowing that he had carried wisdom. The first demonstration of wisdom in his life was judging the case between two harlots. That's a very powerful revelation because the Bible says two harlots went to sleep. They both had children. Are we together now? And the Bible says, I don't know how they slept, but one slept on her child. I can spend all day teaching on that. So you can sleep on your child and never see the glory of God. Because the Bible says in, I think Luke or so, it says when they awoke, they saw the glory of God. Those who sleep and remain sleeping, sleep on everything, including their visions, including their dreams. So the Bible says the woman once slept on her child. And when she woke up in the night, she found out that her child was dead. But the child of the other was still alive. That's why you should pray in the night. Many things have happened to people in the night. It was in the night Joseph confused Rachel with Leah. Night is absence of light. It's not just darkness. Every time you make decisions without light, you are acting in the night. And many mistakes happen in the night. Seven years was added to a man's destiny. Digressing to give you a point. The Bible says Joseph, I mean um, um, Jacob in the house of Laban. Are we together now? He saw Rachel. He liked Rachel. He said, listen, let me work for you for seven years and I'll have Rachel. And by that night, my God, I rebuke night from your life. Yeah. Hear me, I prophesy to you, everything that covers you from accessing light and you are, you are groping in the night, making all kinds of destiny mistakes, may your eyes be open. The Bible says he called the darkness night and the light he called day. So day is not just afternoon or morning. Day is whenever your light comes. Darkness is you can be 12 noon in the afternoon, but it can still be night for you because there is no light. Do you know how many things happen in the night? Good things do happen in the night. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They sang. Deliverance happened in the night. But trouble happened in the night. Should I tell you one more thing that happened in the night? While men slept. Which farmer comes to plant in the night? Come on, talk to me. Do you plant in the night? You rest in the night. But there is a mysterious farmer. And he will come near your house sooner or later because he roams around. He's waiting for those. The moment he sees darkness over your life, he assumes you are ready to sleep. Darkness can mean spiritual slumber. I'm saying many things already to someone tonight. Darkness can mean a state where you are not conscious of spiritual things. While men slept, this mysterious farmer who does not farm in the day. No. While you are active, giving God praise, watering your seeds, watering your destiny, that farmer stays far and keeps hoping that discouragement will bring night upon you. Keeps hoping that whatever will bring night, the moment he sees your son going down, aha, uh -huh, he carries his seeds. So that you intend to plant favor, but what you are reaping is pain and all kinds of things. And you are wondering, who joined me in this farming? Because I remember the seeds I intended to sow. You see, if you farm in the day, you can know when a stranger intrudes. But when it is darkness, you will not know when someone is also throwing seeds in your farm. Again, I pray for you. May darkness be far from your life. May darkness be far from your life. You know what seeds are? Let me tell you what the farmer carries. 
according to the parable that Jesus gave, seeds are words. This is what makes the seeds powerful because you don't have to be at the location where the disaster should happen for the seeds to fall. You can stand from a distance and still sow. Wisdom. You need to pray for wisdom tonight. There are many of us that lack wisdom. It is clear. Everybody you brought into your life was the person sent by the devil to destroy you and you didn't have the eyes to see. What you need is wisdom. Are we together now? Yeah. Wisdom. No discernment. When trouble was about to come in an area, the person in that house left and you were the one who went and entered the house. As soon as you entered the house, the police came and said, whoever is in this house should go to the police station. You say, I'm a new tenant. I just came yesterday. They said, follow us still. Wisdom. Wisdom is connected to mighty works. I have seen many people who love God, but they cannot do much for the glory of God because there is no wisdom. Many families have become and remain small. Many destinies have become and remain small because they lack wisdom. I saw the deficiency of wisdom in my life. I knew that wisdom was beyond education. Thank God for education. They are enhancers. But let me tell you the truth. The wisdom that comes from above is an endowment of the spirit. And when it rests upon your life, wisdom is one of those things that speak immediately. Honestly, if it comes, if it actually lands on your head, it speaks immediately. Quality superior decisions. You can see someone and wisdom will draw you. Go and greet the person. And that becomes the relationship that lifts you to the next level. And people just look at your life and say, why are you just scaling heights? It's like everything you touch turns to gold. That is the very assignment of wisdom. Hallelujah. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Oh, oh, rest on me. Oh, oh, oh rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Let me tell you the truth. When the wisdom of God is at work in your life, there is no problem that will not have an answer in your life. It's a matter of time. Show me a man that carries the wisdom of God. Bring any problem, spiritual problem, organizational problem, you clear out of the way. Just give him time. You will begin to see manifestations that are superhuman. Abilities and suggestions beyond the frame of humans. Let me tell you the truth, hear me. Some of you, your businesses are remaining small like this. What you need is beyond an idea. You need the help of God. Come in as his wisdom. Pastor, you may need the wisdom of God to bail you out of the reproach that stares you in ministry. You need wisdom. Let not the wise man glory. There are men that the Bible acknowledges as wise men. The wisdom of God is at work in their lives. Given by God. Given by God. Given by God. Ladies can carry wisdom. Men can carry wisdom. Adults can carry wisdom. Children can carry wisdom. When the wisdom of God is at work in your life, you don't just read verses. You draw mysteries from the verses you are reading. If you are still reading verses, you just have knowledge. The moment you can see light, in a verse light in a story the point of destiny application in any and every story the wisdom of god has arrived in your life can i tell you you will read the story of the ten virgins and close your bible that is knowledge you will read the story of noah and the ark 
and close your Bible. That is knowledge. Nothing from that story can apply to your life. I hope you know that behind every verse, there is the wisdom of God hiding. And behind the wisdom of God, there is the power of God. That is the order. The scripture, then wisdom stands. Then power stands behind it. The power does not move until the wisdom asks it to move. The value of power is when it is directed by wisdom. Power is like the foil, but wisdom is like the vehicle. What will you be doing with foil when you don't have a car to drive it with? Mighty organizations can rise when the believers understand wisdom. The ability to discern, the ability to know judgment. Honor is a derivative of wisdom. When wisdom is at work in you, it will let you know that there are people you don't fight in your life. Even if they are not born again. There are people who are not castable. God honors their position. And God will give, make them to be at peace with you. So that you will go. You will try to fight them. Your life will be damaged in a way you cannot imagine. Wisdom. There are Cyruses. There are gatekeepers in the world of men. Although they are not saved. The sincerity of their heart has earned them a position that God recognizes. You don't fight such people. You pray that God grants them favor with you so that the gate can be opened for you. There are many foolish people that have carried zeal without knowledge to their detriment. How about honor? It is wisdom that teaches you that when you see results you have not had, acknowledge it with your heart open and you will receive from it. Wisdom. Listen. When the wisdom of God comes upon you, everything becomes a lecturer to you. Everything. You look at the ants, you are learning something. You look at men, you are learning something. You look at fools, you are learning something. You look at wise people, you are learning something. You look at plants, you are learning something. One day, I sat down somewhere and I was watching a tree and I saw leaves falling under the tree. And I was just watching quietly and the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, what you are learning is called the law of reciprocity. That everything that is feeding you, you must also feed it to remain. The leaves coming from that tree are also falling on the ground. They will become manure. You see that now. Every time you stop feeding, and I heard a man of God say this later, that when you stop feeding what is feeding you if it dies you will die so when somebody is a destiny helper you also water that person's life by praying that what is making that person have the money to give you may it continue that is you feeding what is feeding you i'm giving you wisdom hallelujah It takes wisdom for a man to understand that when you don't pray, it's not just about backsliding spiritually, it is pride. Because prayer is the highest demonstration of humility. It is proof before God that you are aware that out of the help of God you cannot do much. Prayerlessness is not just sin, it is pride. It is a declaration of independence out of the assistance of God. I can do it on my own. And the Bible says, be not wise in your own understanding. Is someone learning? I recognize the absence of wisdom in my life. And I knew that no matter the prophecy that was over my head, I would not be able to do anything much for the kingdom if the wisdom of God were not there. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing you can do with a man who has found the wisdom of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you see, wisdom shows you the inner chambers in every palace. In ancient times, they built palaces and those palaces had fortresses. They had gates, but there were certain people called knights. They were the royal guards or the warriors of the king. They were inner chambers that had secret exits that nobody would know. They were inner chambers where the treasury of the nation was kept. The Holy Spirit can draw you by his wisdom and show you things. That means if you were supposed to come out of that 
that um, that kingdom you only knew the door but someone can show you another chamber and you will come out very fast those who carry wisdom can produce 10 years results in two months and you will be angry and say life is not fair no the door you know is not the only door there just because they didn't follow your door does not mean they didn't follow a door did you hear what i said <laughs> everybody must not follow your door to succeed jesus said i am the door that is a mystery it means anywhere he stands it is a door if he stands close to a wall you can walk through a wall through him and come out it is a door wisdom you want to run anything that will give meaning to life you need wisdom you need wisdom to organize your business organize your ministry organize your life put power and honor to your life there is a relationship between shame and foolishness did you hear what I said foolishness here not being an insult is the description of a person that is bankrupt of divine wisdom I want you to be tired of making foolish decisions in your life this night some of you you need to repent all your decisions from January till now you got into trouble you were with the police you finished from police they stopped you somewhere you are in trouble right now every day you are making decisions that are moving you into a place of pain God gave you 10 million naira by January right now you do not even have up to a thousand naira it's gone why because poor decisions which are a product of the bankruptcy of wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek it early will find it is someone learning now let me tell you the truth if the wisdom of God lands upon you my dear man of God my dear businessman you will marvel and wonder I give you one month with the genuine spirit of wisdom you will be surprised to see your results I'm telling you this listen wisdom is the vehicle that speed uses to run wisdom is the vehicle that speed you want to see speed in your destiny give speed wisdom and see what it can do the chariot that wisdom that speed climbs on to fast track your life is called wisdom it is amazing how many believers ignore wisdom and want to prosper no ignore wisdom and want to excel in ministry apostle but um, you, you see my life I'm a sincere graduate but nothing is working in my life I sympathize with you sincerely with all my heart but I will still tell you you are where you are because the absence of wisdom has chained you there your liberty comes when wisdom comes history has done justice in documenting ordinary lives sometimes miserable lives that had nothing around them that looked like results but some of those people were able to access wisdom let me show you three ways to access wisdom quickly I'm still teaching on the expressions of God's glory we have a lot to cover there are three ways to access wisdom number one you can use prayer to access wisdom you can cry unto God for wisdom in prayer you can cry unto God in prayer for wisdom you can cry unto God in prayer for wisdom you can cry unto God in prayer Lord I am aware that I am bankrupt of wisdom but your word tells me that it's in my destiny in Christ to manifest wisdom you can pray your way to accessing genuine wisdom number two light from scripture light from scripture or the diligent study of scripture grants you access to wisdom the wisdom of God is trapped in his word light from scripture the diligent study of scripture gives you access to wisdom the third and final way 
Well, there are many others, but I'm just, maybe I should add two more. Well, for time, I'll just give you one more. Impartation. Impartation from proven careers of the spirit of wisdom. Impartation from proven, not proposed careers. Proven careers of the spirit of wisdom. These, among many ways, are the ways that you access wisdom. I'll repeat it one more time for your understanding. Number one, a cry for wisdom in prayer. Number two, the study of scripture, light that comes from it. Number three, impartation from proven careers of wisdom. And if I can buy out one more minute to talk on wisdom, I will tell you, wisdom is enhanced through meditation. When you know how to meditate, to sit quietly and ponder, the spirit of wisdom begins to move. That is how brilliant, destiny-altering ideas come out. That you just keep a piece of paper in front of you, praying in the spirit, playing worship and saying, Spirit of the living God. Or sometimes you are not even playing worship. In complete silence, speak to me. And God begins to download the next 10 years of your life. Download the next blueprint of your ministry or organization for you. May you find wisdom tonight. Let's discuss the second channel for expressing the glory of God. We're teaching on Dogzazo, how the saints reveal the glory of God and how they return glory to God. Is someone learning? So number one, wisdom. Number two, might or power. Very quickly, I'm just touching them because I'm really, my, my emphasis tonight is how God is glorified, not just how the glory is manifested. But I needed to say this so that it brings perspective to what I'm saying. Power or might is the second way the glory of God is manifest in the world of men. Let me tell you the truth. You cannot manifest the glory of God without power. Spiritual, supernatural power, intellectual power, power in and might in all its ramifications. What is power? The ability to produce results. What is power? The ability to compel compliance. What is power? The ability to compel desired outcomes. It's called power. When God wants his glory to flow through a man, he grants that man power. The glory of God revealed as his healing anointing. If it's to flow to you now, it will come through the healing power of God. Are we together now? When God wants his glory to come to you, bringing you understanding, it will come through the teaching grace. Power. You need power in your life. Genuine power. Power is beyond falling down and standing up. No. Those are just physical expressions of the presence of the power of God and the spirit of God walking in the midst of people. Removing things and delivering things. Genuine power. The capacity to produce results. And I'm praying for someone. The requisite level of power needed in your life and destiny. Especially in the seasons that are before you. I release it upon your life. Yeah. Number three. What is the third channel for expressing or manifesting the glory of God? Riches. Or wealth I like to call it wealth the Bible uses riches but write it down please do you hate poverty that's a very good thing you have done well by hating poverty because if you like poverty something is wrong with your understanding you are not a bad person you just don't understand God's program the subject of wealth and poverty has nothing to do with flamboyancy and glitz and glamour. Are we together now? When you see poverty based on the things you see on social media, you will hate it and it does not carry anything kingdom there. But when you see poverty as a tool that empowers you to reveal the glory of God, empowers you like I've taught you, 
to live a comfortable life empowers you to be efficient empowers you to fund the program of God now your orientation has been adjusted properly you have added kingdom come to that concept and it changes everything when believers begin to pursue the subject of finances outside of purpose outside of God outside of kingdom it becomes a blind and a vain pursuit that just sells self and carnality leading to their destruction this is not what we're advocating but I can tell you based on the authority of scripture and like you know poverty is bad in every ramification it strips men of dignity and honor it cripples you from living out your destiny. It stops you from being a blessing. That part of being a blessing is an important component in being wealthy. Most people focus on being blessed. But the last instruction, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3, In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Not just that I will bless you. Can I tell you something? I was studying on fruit bearing and I got to find out that any fruit that eats itself is termed rotten. You know what it means for a fruit to be rotten? That means it starts eating itself. Because every fruit lives to be eaten by someone else, not itself. Whatever eats itself and consumes and enjoys itself begins to rot. The principles of fruit bearing is that number one, fruits carry out they manifest fruits, point the tree that birthed them. When you see a mango fruit on the ground, most likely the trees closer there. So trees, fruits are signs. They point you to the tree. And they carry the character of the tree that has birthed them. And then all fruits are visible. Maybe they are invisible fruits in the spirit, but in the world of men, all fruits are visible to the eyes and then number three fruits serve others they serve a cause bigger than themselves when they start eating themselves they rot so when your entire understanding of finances is just me how i will buy a car buy a house live for myself you are being a fruit that is not fruitful are we learning this is very important but wealth is very important you cannot run a ministry with integrity without wealth you cannot run business without wealth you cannot take care of your children without financial resources settle it once and for all that you need financial resources more than you will ever realize I'm not talking of an obsession for money there are people who are obsessed about money. You want to wake them up, shout money. You want to redirect them, shout money. Everything around their life resolves, revolves around money. That's not what I'm talking about. There is no kingdom program I know that is not dependent on finances. Hallelujah. I have seen for myself as a man of God and as a leader, the necessity of financial supplies. You will not be poor. Yeah. If you don't believe it, allow your neighbor receive in peace. You will not be poor. Yeah. Truly, poverty strips men of dignity. I tell you, there is nothing glorious about it. It strips you of dignity. I've told you that there are three things that will happen to your life if you remain in poverty perpetually. Number one, you will steal. Number two, you will tell lies. You will not lie because you are bad. You will lie because you are poor. Wealth is a defense. It helps protect your integrity. Number three, you will compromise. You will compromise. You will do many things you should not do. There is dignity when you have wealth with vision. There is dignity when you have wealth with purpose. There is dignity when you have wealth with a heart that loves Jesus passionately and understands the assignment of wealth. Again, I'm praying for you. Whatever has robbed you and robbed your family from the dignity of accessing financial resources, here and now, in the name of Jesus, we open the door for a new season. 
have told you you will not sit under this grace and only be spiritually vibrant in order of priority your spiritual growth and vibrancy is my number one assignment but every other dimension of God that gives you dignity and gives you wholesome living must be added to your life Genesis 17 and verse 6 it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of not into thee out of thee that means someone who may be ordinary now for want of word by the time the word of God works on your heart works on your mind works on your hands and grace is deposited upon your destiny you will marvel at what your finances become in the name of Jesus Christ that you will do ministry with dignity there are people here you will you will literally single-handedly sign the annual budgets of ministries by January on your own because of how much you love the Lord you will be so blessed I'm saying it to you as a prophetic word that you will set up an organization and your services is to identify pro kingdom ministries and send support to them literally you will filter ministries from across Africa across the globe and literally allocate resources let this mission agency have this let this one have this I speak it to you in the name of Jesus I'm very very unapologetic about the relevance of financial resources and let me tell you one truth prosperity and finances does not necessarily affect your spiritual life it's not true if it were true God himself would have backslidden the one who owns the earth his wealth has not affected his holiness nor his spiritual life when your spiritual life is affected because of money it's a result of poor mentorship you were not mentored well to understand the value it was just maybe just receive money 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 no I'm not being critical but I think it's the balance that needs to come to the body of Christ once we keep fueling the lust of believers oh just have money just claim this just claim that you find a lot of visionless believers who are obsessed about money they can kill for money they can lie for money they can do everything they can backslide for money no that is a very poor advocacy the same way you seek grace for prayer as a tool for your excelling the same way you seek the anointing as a tool to represent God that is how you must sincerely desire finances as part of the equippings please look at me when you have a car to drive your children will you be a better father will you be a more effective father if God moves you from being a tenant to being an honorable house owner if you take care of your family having that peace do you think it will give you a better atmosphere to serve God I think so I think so if you have enough resources and you can bless your aged parents your brothers your sisters if you can send your loved ones and other children to school and they have the opportunity to go are you a blessing doing that there is a deception that has trapped the body of Christ two deceptions number one is an advocacy that negates the value of financial empowerment number two marketing of carnality wrapped around the subject of finances they are both deceptions from hell well I've made my choice for as long as I live in the name of Jesus as for me and for koinonia you make your decision by yourself but as for me I've made up my mind that as I serve the Lord it will be with dignity in the name of Jesus Christ that the absence of financial resources will not cripple my efficiency as a person nor will it affect the program of God we will serve God to the very end with dignity whatever it will take to win souls to the nations God will grant the wisdom grant the empowerment and the resources can I tell you the truth I have taught you that there are two ways resources come into the hands of people is someone learning tonight number one value I just thought to point that value 
If you are not valuable and your value is not needed and useful within the context of a civilization, you will be poor. There is a science to wealth. There is spirituality to wealth. But it's important you have the foundational understanding. Being superstitious over the issue of finances is childishness and even foolishness. You want to prosper, you must be valuable. It is the person who receives your value that rewards you. If you are not valuable or valuable enough, your value must be packaged, refined, and served with excellence. Hallelujah. There are many, many mediocres in the body of Christ wrapping their mediocrity around Christian sentiments and wondering why they are not prospering. If I give you a project and your project is to clean this place, even if you are praying in tongues and you don't clean it well, and it does not meet the standards of excellence, I will love you, but you will go out. Be on your way out quickly because you have not communicated value. You will not be rewarded. It's as simple as that. Show me a man who has identified his value, refined it, and served it with excellence. I show you a man who will not beg. Number two, favor through relationships. The second way financial resources come to men is favor through relationships. You are as powerful as the relationships you have. Hear what I'm saying? You are as powerful as the men that stand by you even financially to support you. The quickest way to rise and scale financially is through the ministry of men. It's favor from God, but through men. I've shared with you the story of Isaac, of, of Abraham and Lot. I've shared with you the story of Abimelech and Abraham. I've shared with you the story of Esther and Ahasuerus. I've shared with you the story of Ruth and Boaz. All of these people prospered through relationships. Who hates you does not matter, I will repeat Koinonia, but who likes you matters. May good people like you. When God wants to accelerate your journey into becoming financially blessed, he will connect you not by your manipulating your way into their lives. He will connect you by his spirit. When you meet someone of means, he will bless you according to his riches in glory. There is glory in riches. Did you hear what I said? Yes. Most likely, if you meet a billionaire, the likelihood that he will give you 10,000, um, it may not be. Because no matter how he tries to reduce it, his realm does not allow him to give you less than a particular amount. It's not pride. It's just how they are. Their unit of operation is somebody else's miracle. Whether you believe it or not, it's not I am telling you how it works. It's as honest and as simple as that. That means many of you have not received from God. Because if what I have said is true, then if God really reaches down to you and it does not surprise you, it has not arrived. Are we together now? Let me tell you how God blesses. Cast your net to the right side immediately. Did you see what they caught? Let me tell you how God blesses. Your wine, your oil, your flour will not deplete. And that woman lived up to it. Let me show you how God blesses. By this time tomorrow, and Samaria was in an avalanche. For someone, whilst you are seated here, your parcel from heaven, after many, many days and many years of witchcraft operation, stopping it from arriving, whilst you are here in Koinonia, it has finally arrived the world of men. And in the name of Jesus, listen, let me tell you the truth. And I don't, I hate to sound arrogant and forgive me if I do, but even as a human being in my own little way, God has used me to extend love and compassion in the area of finances to people. And I have seen what it has done to them. This is me as a man. I've had the honor of giving somebody one naira, two naira, and I've seen how it changed their lives. How much God? What are you saying? God can end your prayer request in a moment. I'm telling you. 
You don't believe me? I'm not talking about finances, so, but as I just said, it, it's just compassion that came from my heart. Value, favor. Now, let me tell you the truth. Value is your own responsibility. But you see, you can have what to give and be serving the wrong people. They would still not bless you. It is the assignment of God to keep rearranging your audience till you find yourself in the midst of the people who have a recognition for what you carry. And I'm praying it for someone because you are gifted. Truly, you have worked on your gift. But the audience you have been serving are wrong audience. They don't have, listen, if you find yourself in the midst of people who are not ordained to celebrate what you carry, they can despise you even if you are a champion. When God wants to help such a man, he rearranges your audience. I have taught you here, Joseph interpreted the dream of the baker. The same gift that made him a king, but nobody rewarded him because of the person's dream he interpreted. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He remained there. But when the king dreamt and he interpreted the king's dream, immediately he became prime minister. Same gift, not an addition, just a change of audience. Let me prophesy to someone. May my God change your audience. May my God bring kings before you. Gatekeepers before you, captains of industry before you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you the truth. For many years, I served many territories with the grace God gave me. But of course, it's the law of process. I served many territories that had disdain for this grace that you celebrate today. But when God wanted to show me mercy, he changed the audience and brought you. Hear me. There are many businessmen hearing me here. What you carry can give you an international standing. But it is wrong people who have been seeing your ideas. And they will be striking a pen on great destiny altering ideas. What you need is for the right person. There are people who have been praying for you. They just don't know you are the one they are praying for. They have been praying for a secretary and yet you are close to them. You are the kind of secretary that they will, even if it's one million naira per month, they will pay you. If they really discover that you are the one. Do you know a man can pray and not know what he's praying for? A man can pray and not know how his answer will look like. I'm praying for you again. The person ordained to reward you for what you carry, to reward your many years of investments. I call upon the God of my covenant tonight. Between now and the end of next month, may you find these people. May they find you. May you find them. May they find you. May there be a meeting point in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me tell you. When you find the man your gift was sent to bless they will almost worship you you will be flattered and say you mean this thing i have despised hello look up i hope you know the people to buy the oil of the of the wife of the prophet maybe they were praying god you mean nobody has oil whereas the oil they will buy was in a house but was in a quiet jar somewhere after the prophet spoke and it multiplied he said go and sell it meaning there are customers you just have not seen them there are people that when they see you your oil will not spend the night they will say we have been praying for you there are architects here you have been meeting the wrong people you you should be designing cities and yet you are still begging for mini projects because the wrong audience i pray for you may the god of my covenant rearrange your audience Rearrange your audience. Rearrange your audience. Can I tell you the truth? Listen to me. When the right people see your gift, they will announce to their circle. That's what makes it the, the factor becomes so it's like wildfire. They will call all their friends and say, The person we have been praying for. 
the HR consultant we have been praying for, the man of God whose messages we've been praying to hear. Whoever is praying for you, praying that you arrive, praying that you come into their space, by prophecy, I push you to their space. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please be seated. it down for me. Are you learning tonight? So when the glory of God wants to find expression in your life, it finds expression as wisdom. It finds expression as power. It finds expression as wealth. Wealth provides possibilities. There are things you cannot do if you are not blessed. You cannot do. You can make noise and you cannot do it. It's as simple as that. I will always make reference to the privilege God has given us to hold the conferences we are holding across many nations. That has happened by the Spirit of God. It's one thing to hear God, but it's another thing to have the capacity to obey Him. There are many of you who God has given instructions to. But the wherewithal to obey is not there. Again, I pray for you one last time. In the name of Jesus. I know you have ideas, but may help us start the financial journey for you. May God raise someone to help you with your rent. May God raise someone to buy you a vehicle. May God raise someone to give you a house. It's not laziness. It's called the help of God. It doesn't make you lazy. It only gives you acceleration. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. Thank you. We are very, very appreciative of your presence in this community. This is a community of believers. We are here to enlighten ourselves through the Word of God, through practical life applicable teachings. So if you have not subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to this channel. If you have not liked this video, please just take two seconds and just hit that like button and share this video with others to bless someone just as you have been blessed by this video. It is only God that can do the impossible and when you are faced with impossibility in your life the only place to run to the only person to run to is god and that is why we encourage ourselves to keep studying the word of god to keep praying fasting to keep meditating on the word of god so that god will come through for us have a nice time god bless you see you in another of our video and there are so many videos that we have posted so far go through our channels go through our channel and check on our videos and see how impactful they are going to be in your life thank you god bless you keep shining for jesus keep shining for god peace